So this episode officially establishes a new variant of Walker, uh, one that we've seen before back in season one, but before this official reveal, it was from when Frank Darabont was the showrunner, and he had the Walkers be a bit more capable, they could pick things up, they could climb, they remembered things from before, this makes it canon, this was just another variant, so in Atlanta, in the city, that's a place where this more capable variant resides. Now this one acts quite a bit different to the much faster, much stronger walk we saw in France in the end credit scene for World Beyond. It's almost like it's in a different stage to the one we saw in episode 19. This is what Daryl and inevitably Rick Grimes are going to be up against. Of course in their separate series at first, but Daryl's going to be going to France and Rick's probably already seen it. That is clearly the most dangerous variant. So we've got the normal walkers that we're used to, then we've got the more capable walkers and then we've got the third variant in France where the woman was shot in the head. She wasn't shot in the back, that was a part of her coat. Came back immediately and remembered where the door was so she ran to the door faster than any other walker we've seen in The Walking Dead. This zombie was also a lot more aggressive. It was making noises we've not really heard from a zombie before. <laughs> This is the zombie in France that Daryl will be dealing with, but inevitably, it's going to cross over into the US. Now, this more capable walker that isn't quite the running one, isn't quite the stronger one, but still remembers just like in season one, I think this will be in New York City. It's already in the main show now, and Scott Gimple said New York City, just like in France, will be a completely different apocalypse, so naturally, it's going to have this more capable zombie. The fact that we saw these zombies in Atlanta, a city, it would make sense that in New York City, they're there too, they reside from cities. Of course, they made their way out of a city to get to Aaron and the group in this episode, but is there something in the cities to cause this variant to spawn? Now, in that end credit scene, we find out, of course, that's in France, but also, there's two teams of doctors called the Primrose and Violet team. There's likely more, but these are the two mainly to blame, according to this French man here. So, whether they created the virus or made it worse, either way, it seems like they were trying to weaponize it. So, the dumb zombie, the more capable zombie, and the faster zombie, which one is their experiment working? It seems like in The Walking Dead now, all this time, we've been seeing these monsters that are just failed experiments and this faster one is what they were meant to be, this unbeatable soldier. Also, something to note if you're not too sure, and when we first saw these zombies and when they turned into the ones we know of now in The Walking Dead, it was all of season one and the first episode of season two, then Frank Darabont stopped directing it, so they would have started to turn into the ones that we've been seeing in The Walking Dead, but that's where they've been on the show, so mainly in the city of Atlanta and a bit nearer to Herschel's farm, but from season three you would have noticed they're the zombies we've always seen. I actually really like how this scene was done as well, it was a pretty good reveal. It's cool that Lydia was there, she was a whisperer and daughter of the leader of the whisperers and even she was like... Obviously, it would have been cool if someone died, you know me. I'm not keen at all on this contrived relationship between Elijah and Lydia. Well, not relationship yet, but same thing, romance. You can see it from a mile away, what's gonna happen. You know, I, I was sitting there with candles, begging for Elijah to die. It would have been really cool, but this was just the tip of the iceberg. There will be that scene where this becomes a problem. This was letting you know it's out there, but there's still gonna be a moment where this variant tells you who it really is. And this was like the main walker they used. He was like, the one we saw at the start of the episode. He almost had his own personality and this was the one to pick up a rock and it was about to bludgeon Jerry. Jerry hurt his leg in a really, let's say, clumsy way. It wasn't some cool thing like he got speared by one of those more capable walkers. <laughs> I think, okay, well, what else would they have done? So it's, it's okay. But what I get more from this is that because he didn't die in this episode, this leg wound might come into play. They're not out of the woods yet. Literally. He was nearly killed just before Aaron saved him. Aaron might not be there next time. There was a slow motion bit with Jerry, and it did make you think, wait a minute, Jesus had the slow motion bits in the reveal of the Whisperer, so is that what's gonna happen to Jerry now? Hello? Sir Aaron? <laughs> Nothing. 
I give them so much credit for doing this with the variants. I've always wanted this. I think this is something that if you're a fan of zombies, if you're a zombie lover, this is really good for you. It was a good episode too, but I think the main thing with this episode is it's called variants. You would have thought that, that would be the centre, the big thing in the episode, and that is what you took away from it, but I also took away from it the dreadful princess scenes. It was like 10 minutes of her sitting there. She had a 40 minutes episode in season 10 with the story about a, a dad. I'm not interested now. That was 10 minutes we could have had on the variant. Well, you know what? They've really thought they did something with this princess speech. But apart from that, I liked the episode. I thought it was quality. What a great thing to do in canonizing what we thought was just a difference in directors. Now, we still haven't actually seen what happened to Oceanside at the end of episode 16. We still don't know how that turned out. And these walkers were on the way there. So clearly they're aware there's food at Oceanside. There is pictures of Luke in the later episodes of the season. So, of course, he survives. But from what and at what cost is it his arrival that lets us know Oceanside was ravaged by variants? If Oceanside were killed by these variants, then surely they're going to turn into them themselves. Finally, Oceanside were useful. I've always thought if there was the arrival of a new walker, it would lead to a scene of complete slaughter, showing you who they really are. We've seen them bash up against doors and pick up rocks, but this could be massive. I've always loved Eugene, even through his debatably treacherous ventures in season 7 and 8. He's always been really funny, but there was a moment in this episode where he wasn't funny because they acknowledged it. I mean, this was basically just Josh McDermott. In fact, if you look really really close. Very well. Outside, in my <clears throat> mind. Cause sometimes I look in her eyes. Yeah, I'm talking about her. Somebody, to me, man. You just cut in front of me and I said don't cut in front of me. So with Pamela holding Eugene responsible, she wants to use him as an example. He's been in hiding and he won't leave until he has Max, but Max gets taken, so Eugene turns himself in. Now, do I think he will die from this? No. I still think Rosita or Gabriel are gonna get it. Likely Rosita. But what do you think? Of course, not talking about the next episode, but in the last few, who do you think will die by the end of the main show? Rosita? Eugene? Gabriel? Aaron? What do you think of these different variants of walkers? Are you happy that there's more types of walkers now? When this more capable zombie inevitably appears later on in the episodes, who do you want to be the one to die in that much bigger reveal scene? Let me know your thoughts on all of it down below. Of course, if you enjoy the video, make sure you press the like button, subscribe if you're new. Thank you for watching. I'll see you soon.